Welcome to the All Ball Show, presented by Abstract Sports, where we bring sports back to life. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. In the All Ball Show, we focus on basketball-only content. And to tip things off, I'm covering every single team in the NBA, from worst to best in each conference. I'm going to look at their rosters and discuss how I think they're going to perform this upcoming season. Up next on the list is the number five team from the Western Conference last year, the Utah Jazz. I actually like the Utah Jazz, but only because I use them. And what I mean is they're the closest NBA team to me, and so I travel to them to watch the teams that I want to watch. And it's not the Utah Jazz. I mean, they are an exciting team, especially these last few years. I'm having Donovan Mitchell as a rookie last year, a, a breakout rookie uh, in the dunk contest, showing out for the, for Utah Jazz faithful. Uh, but they also have Rudy Gobert and uh, Joe Ingles, and man, they they have they just have a really good team. Ricky Rubio as well. So I'm not surprised they ended up in the number five spot. But I just have to say that I like the Jazz because I like to go there and watch my Lakers play. I've seen the Warriors play there once or twice. I've seen the Clippers. Uh, I've seen a lot of different teams, honestly. And this coming year, I'll be going to Salt Lake to watch the Lakers again, but this time with the King himself, LeBron James, or as I like to call him, LeBron Jams. According to Wikipedia, the Jazz have been playing their home games at the Vivint Smart Home Arena since 1991. And I know that's not true because I went to a game in like 99, 2000, or 2001, somewhere in there. And it was the Delta Center at the time. So get it together, Wiki. Maybe I need to go correct you. Their head coach is Quinn Snyder. He's a a real no-nonsense coach. You can see it by the look of his face all the time. Uh, He just looks very serious. He wants to go out there and compete, and he wants to win. And uh, he's... When he, he actually does interviews, usually angry guys don't do interviews, but he does. So I think he's a big part of the reason why the Jazz have been so dang good uh, with the parts they have. They've had a lot of inexperienced players in the last five or so years, but they just have a way of finding good coaches to help mend them and uh, shape them into players to help each other out and uh, ultimately get some wins and make it to the playoffs. Their mascot is the Jazz Bear. I can say having gone to a bunch of games, he's very entertaining. He climbs up tall ladders. He does the slide down the stairs from the, the all the way up at the top of the lower bowl and down to the court. T-shirt tosses for days. Yeah, it's a good time. And here's a little little known fact. Uh, the Utah Jazz have the fifth highest all-time NBA regular season win-loss record percentage of 54%-ish among all current NBA teams. That's pretty good. They were really good in the 90s when they had Stockton and Malone. Much like the Raptors kept getting shut out of moving on in the playoffs because of LeBron and the Cavaliers, uh, the Jazz were very much like that, except they ha- they had to go across Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Uh, but that was, I guess, that's more in the playoffs though, because the, the Bulls are Eastern Conference, Jazz are Western Conference, so it's not like they're holding each other back from getting to the championship. Uh, but the Bulls shut the Jazz down pretty hard back in the day when they had a really good team. Talking like Jeff Hornacek, Carl Malone, John Stockton. Those are the ones that I remember. The Jazz had a 48-34 and 34 record last season, but the tiebreaker gave them the number 5 seed. They were 34-18 and 18 in conference play, 28-13 and 13 at home, and 20-21 and 21 on the road. So pretty dang good for a Jazz squad who just added a, a rookie talent in Donovan Mitchell and moved some parts around in the offseason. With that record, they were able to make it to the playoffs, and they played the Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round. And, you know, OKC did not live up to their potential where they had uh, Carmelo Anthony, Russell Westbrook, and Paul George. Um, I think that they had too many guys who wanted the ball in their hands or needed the ball in their hands to be productive. There are other players out there who are good at setting screens and helping assist on plays. Well, all three of these guys want to pull the trigger. Um, I mean, Russell Westbrook is Mr. Triple-Double. He had 41 in a season two seasons ago. Um, He pays attention to his stats, okay? I mean... We all know that. It's pretty obvious. They played the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they managed to beat them in six games. The Thunder got the first game in OKC, but then the Jazz won the next three. So they won one on the road, two at home in Utah, and then they lost another one at home or away, and then they won their last home game in game six to put the OKC Thunder out of the Western Conference playoff bracket. But the Jazz had to go on and take on the Houston Rockets who were the number one seed by a large margin. They have 
extremely high firepower from the three-point line and just different kinds of scoring abilities. A very, very fast team. And they got beat in five games and put out of the playoffs. But some of the players on their team, um, there are a lot of guys you probably wouldn't even recognize um, because you didn't hear about them. I mean, the Jazz are one of the smallest market teams in the NBA, so it makes sense that some of these players would not come up on your radar. Um, Even their good players don't show up sometimes. Like Rudy Gobert had to fight for three years to get into the Defensive Player of the Year conversation. Um, And then when he got there, he actually won it. So they had Tony Bradley, Alec Burks, Jay Crowder, Dante Exum, Derek Favors, Rudy Gobert, Rodney Hood, Joe Ingles, Jonas Jerebko, Joe Johnson, Eric McCree, Donovan Mitchell, Naz Mitrulong. That's one guy I I do not recognize at all. Raul Neto, Georges Niang, uh, Niang with an N-I-A, not Diang. Royce O'Neal, Ricky Rubio, Thabo Cephalosha, David Stockton, which is John Stockton's son, Epke Udo, and Nate Wolters. But with those guys, they put up some pretty dang good numbers. I mean, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys in double-digit averaging points. And then Rudy Gobert was double-doubling it up with a 10.7 rebounds per game. Donovan Mitchell, though, he was their star guy. 20.5 points a game. He's seven points a game higher than Rudy Gobert, who was next on the list. He also had 3.7 rebounds a game, 3.7 assists, 1.5 steals, and uh, he pretty much did it all. He shot pretty good from the field, too, so there's that. Donovan Mitchell had 1,600 points. I'm pretty sure he was the leading scorer as a rookie. Uh, Ricky Rubio had 1,000 points. Derek Favors, 900. And then... Joe Ingles, 900, a 700, 600, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, and that's it. They had 21 guys on their roster, and the, the bottom six guys had 10 points or less. Effectively, they had about 15 guys on their team. Those six guys, they also played less than 10 games, and that makes total sense. And here's a quick look at who might be on their roster for the upcoming season for the Utah Jazz. Rudy Gobert will still be there, Ricky Rubio, Alec Burks, Jay Crowder as well, John uh, Donovan Mitchell, Tony Bradley, Thabo Cephalosha, Royce O'Neal, Epke Udo, Joe Ingles, Grayson Allen. He's the big rookie kid that they got out of Duke. He's got some anger problems, but I think that Coach Quinn Snyder can help whip him into shape. Uh, Derek Favors is there, Dante Exum, Raul Neto. A lot of returning players for the Jazz. That could mean some good things for them. I'm excited to see what they can do this year. I mean, I imagine the the West is not going to be as tight as it was. The Jazz have to really prove themselves that they belong that high in the playoff bracket. Uh, There are a lot of good teams in the West now. They've got to do everything they can. They've got to have Rudy Gobert doing his defensive thing. They've got to have Ricky Rubio doing his passing thing and scoring thing for that matter. Joe Ingles got to be hitting those three balls. Donovan Mitchell's got to be putting the hurt on everybody. They got to have guys coming from all different angles if they're going to be successful in this Western Conference. It's going to be a long ride, but I'm looking forward to it. And that does it for this episode of the All Ball Show presented by Abstract Sports. How do you think the Utah Jazz are going to do this year? Do you think they're going to do all right? Well, please let us know in the comments below and hit a like button on this video if you enjoyed watching this. Uh, But also subscribe to our channel if you want to get more basketball content throughout the season. I'm your host, Kyle Clay 2K. I'll see you in the next one.